This court is so sick and tired of seeing adults ruin and abuse children. These are literally just one step from being babies. Children are the future of society. They require tender care and kindness to grow up. However, there are those who do not harbor any kindness towards them. These individuals do not even think twice about carrying out heinous acts against children. You took a knife when you left that point. The knife used to kill Rebecca and the children. From someone violating multiple children to someone taking the life of their own child. As to count two, felony murder, guilty, vacated by law due to the conviction on count one. Here are some cases where dangerous child murderers reacting to life sentences. Failure to register, failure to verify residence at the specified times. The case was centered around Terry McFadden. In 2019, Terry McFadden violated two younger girls. Soon after, the police were able to connect him with the horrific act and then decided to press charges against him. A lot of questions are raised once a crime has been committed. There are many clues and events that need explanation. During this period, a lot of bone chilling details usually surface that otherwise would have been lost. The complaint was. Okay, the complaint is in nature. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, I can tell that did you expect me to say that? Because it uh, kind of seemed like it. Um, this this is time to get it all out there. You know, just tell us what what happened so we 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 can follow up accordingly. Okay. Okay. Can you tell us what happened? Um, well, I know. Just uh, most recently, Friday, when uh, Jen came up to in to pick up, uh, <clears throat> she was naked from the waist down which she ripped she had just torn off her or took taken off her pants which uh, again kids that age sometimes too mm -hmm. so uh and so and then she started running around naked mm -hmm. and uh and uh, so we found her underwear over here and her pants over there and her mom put them back on her so she she saw her running around naked um uh, before that, we had been sitting on the couch, and she had been climbing all over me, uh -huh. uh, just as like, well, a game that she uh, climbed up behind me and then went over, just just rolled over, you know, like gymnastics kind of a thing, and, and on, onto the floor and then rolled over and when was we'll do that again. Just uh, it was also Friday before that, okay. but we did that for a bunch of times. I was just sort of sitting there going, "Oh, we stopped," and then suddenly she pulled her pants down and did that. <sighs> so yeah, come on, put your pants back on. So put the pants back on. Then she and then and then suddenly you know she took them off all together. All together. And, and so we stopped playing that game. Uh, and I got up and walked around, but uh, kind of was about that time that her mom came. Okay. Uh, I don't think her mom saw us playing that game, I hope. Okay. But uh, that might have been, uh, been something that she uh, saw. Uh, you know, is there that, anything else? Now, uh, no. person is really a touchy-feely, cuddly kind of a kid. Mm -hmm. And she always wants to climb on me and and uh, she wants me to hold her or pick her up, you know and carry her around. So I do that, you know, I don't, uh, and so, of course you you know, play on me as, a, as we're sitting on the couch mm -hmm. on my lap and, and whatever, or sometimes I try to get her to quiet down. I just hold her on my lap and cuddle. Okay. That's just, that's when she be terrible. clothed? <clears throat> and she's clothed, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. And so, yes, yeah, always clothed, but uh, just cuddling. We do, so we do cuddle clothes. Okay. So I'm sitting on the couch, I don't know. Okay. Um, now, when you guys went, when she was climbing all over you, was she clothed, fully clothed? Uh, most of the times until she took, but she she pulled her pants down and went over me, and I realized I saw, you know, mm -hmm. she was it was different time to hear. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that I pulled back up, and then she did it again, and then she did it again, and uh, when she was riding around after that, she pulled her pants all the way down, took them off, and then. Started, I said, you know, okay, no, no. So then she started running around the house uh, that way for a few minutes. It, uh, I got up uh, the uh, computer and I went over to help. 
watched her, and there she was without pants on. Where was your wife at during all this? Was she um, with the other kids? I think she was doing something in the kitchen, maybe with with. Okay. Or, I'm, um, but anyway, so yeah, that was. Is there anything right. else that might have happened? Because something like that, we would have, we really wouldn't be investigating. You know, thing, things like that happen. Four-year-olds are going to be four-year-olds. Is there anything else that happened during that interaction that we need to talk about now? If there is, you need to tell us now that we're not going to, if we find out during the course of our investigation, it's going to be much worse. Um, this is your opportunity to get it all out on the table, let us know what happened, so we can do whatever it is that we need to do to, to move on, okay? It's your opportunity to be to be honest and tell us what happened, okay? Did you uh, climb on top of you with your pants off? Did you touch her in a way that wouldn't have been appropriate for a caretaker to touch? Um, yes. Okay. Um, what happened? Well, let me see. Smacked her bottom. Um, what? I think I, and yes, I mean, I mean bottom, so. What do you mean um, by that? Huh? What do you mean by that? You kissed her butt? Just her, her butt, yes. Okay, are you Not sure? Like that. Sure, it smacked. Wasn't, sure it wasn't something else that you kissed? And Are you sure it wasn't something else you kissed? And I, yes. What did you do? I did kiss down here. Okay. So you kissed vagina? Yeah. No, was it just, was just it a, a quick... Was it just yeah. a kiss or was it... it I'm just trying to get the picture on exactly what happened, okay? This is your opportunity to tell us what happened. Did, did you use any tongue or anything like that, sir? The criminal will always be discovered, regardless of how hard he tries to hide his deeds. Here, Terry's mask began to slip as his true face started to surface. So is this... Purposely do that, I know, because they don't want it. Is this an addiction that you feel like you struggle with? Um... I don't know. Maybe that I said. Maybe that's a possibility. That's uh, one maybe, of the one of the. Uh, could you get me more water? Yeah, absolutely. Sir. No problem. I'm yeah. sorry. Oh no, you're good. No, what this is this is very. Oh, you can no problem. Uh, we have infinite, very, infinite supply. We're oh. Good. When uh, one of the things that I do is I, I work with internet crimes against children, so I, I'm familiar with the addiction that that can come with this, and it sounds like that you've made some key terms and phrases when you've talked about this that, you know, I've. I've it's hard for me. I've tried, and and um, so I'm wondering if this is something yeah, that you I mean, daily maybe deal with. Maybe it's maybe it's yes. It's it's and maybe that's a good word. Yes, that's a good word. Addiction, because I how long has it been going on? Uh, I mean, we've been. She's. I've been retired and working with the kids now for just a couple of years. Mm -hmm. 2017, I retired. Um, so, um, and I really haven't had kind of this kind of a thing, mm -hmm. um, for lack of a better word, um, until, uh, I mean, oh, hi. You are. You're welcome. <sighs> and I don't know when I, I started getting that. Did it ever happen with your daughters when they were young? getting that intimate no i didn't with my daughters i mean that's the point i didn't with other kids mm -hmm. in in the house um and one one I thing just yeah but but some something i i started doing i mean and and you know i told myself that she likes it uh I, and actually because she keeps coming up coming up to me all the time and and obviously something and and climbing climbing all over and both, both, mm -hmm. uh, and, no, not, also is very active. No, I understand, there's, like there's that, definitely, but, I'm not, but, yeah, it's, it's typically, you know, one or the other, as, as my yeah. experience has shown me, it's typically if there's a, a, a sexual attraction to, to girls, there's not usually the boys as well, I mean, it's few and far between, but the one thing I'll ask you, and again, in the, in the same lines of, you know, honesty, have you ever taken any inappropriate photographs of or no I so like if we if we looked in your phone or on your computer mm -hmm. there wouldn't be anything no okay um have you ever 
do you ever view, watch, download child pornography? Not child pornography. I mean, I look at what's considered porn of adult. Okay, but, but, that's but, fine. But, but not child, no. Okay, have you ever... So you've never gone on the internet and looked at pictures of children and, and again, I know this is going to be uh, embarrassing awkward, have you ever masturbated to photographs of children that someone else might seem was inappropriate? Uh, no, not, I mean, I, I don't think I've seen pictures of children naked. Mm -hmm. uh, on the internet? On the internet. How did you find those photographs? Well, actually, I, I searched, there's a, family pictures they're not they're they're not children doing actual things okay just children they're, nude. they're children nude playing and, and at, at nudist camps and things okay. like that so it's you, their families okay but you don't personally know these families I don't personally know these families it's just that those are the kind of pictures that can be found what, I mean, what do you search when you when you find those photographs family nudity or something like that is a, is a search thing. But Do you have to put nudist camp or something specific like that or? Um, the word nude helps. Right. But again, they're, they're not of the children. They're, they're not, they're not I poor. Can, they're not. Right. They're just standing there they're, maybe playing at a playground. Playing and, making... and stuff like that, doing things, yes. Okay. Um, and usually with an adult, with adults, other adults there. Uh, so those, uh, I mean, yes, I've, I've looked up stuff like that on, on the computer. And you, and again, like that, I said, doing this all the time, but when you search those, you're focusing on the children that are new. Um, I'm looking at the, ever, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, um, um, but no, I haven't sat there and, and, and it while I watched it. Okay. I mean, it's, it's arousing, of course. Right. But, um, but, uh, but now do you but uh, at, after the uh the circumstances with that's something that maybe you think about later while being this is also kind of helping with that whole you know trying to understand the the, the level of uh, addiction you might be suffering from with this um and you know something that might you know down the road require you know what, what kind of assistance or help that you know could be to your aid so you know, like I said, after if you're not if you're not ejaculating or you know getting to that that end with them, is that something that maybe later on in the evening you'll think about and then and then get to? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I honestly have to think about that. I mean, if is in the shower when I take a shower sometimes, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all guys. We, we, have a, we have a thought in our head when, when that might be going on. Is that something that you think about? Do they, do they come up? Um, Ultimately, the judge determined the criminal's fate. Would the judge be able to deliver justice for the two young girls? And a child victim offense. As such, you will be a Tier 3 registrant for your lifetime with in-person verification every 90 days. Failure to register, failure to verify residence at the specified times, or failure to provide notice of a change in resident address or other required information as described above will result in criminal prosecution. <clears throat> this court is so sick and tired of seeing adults ruin and abuse children. These are literally just one step from being babies. They come to a daycare. Those parents struggle so that when they release their children to someone during the day, they have some semblance that that child is going to be protected and safe. Not let alone two of their children being raped by your own admission, sir. For gratification you violated a four-year-old and a six-year-old 
I do not know at this time what the total ramifications will be for those two young children. But there isn't anybody who doesn't understand now the developmental phases of children take place from zero to six years old. You can't even know what damages you've done for sexual gratification. This to me is so mind boggling that you used and abused two little children like they're, they're, they're inconsequential beings. Those are human persons with human dignity. The mere fact that they're small little people that can't fight off adults. That's why an adult left them with adults. I'm going to tell you something, Mr. McFadden, there's no free rapes in my courtroom. On count one, I'm sending you to prison for 11 years. On count four, I'm sending you to prison for 11 years. They will be consecutive to each other for a total of 22 years. You have 32 days jail credit. Um, at this time, the court finds it necessary to protect the public from future crimes, to punish the offender, and to find that consecutive sentences are not disproportionate to the seriousness of the offender's conduct and to the danger the offender poses to the public. Folks, if you see it, you smell it, you know it's happening, you report it. These are little children that are the future. I hate to sound so cliche, but the children are our future and if we're destroying them, we have no future. And this ends in this courtroom. That'll be all. Uh, fines and costs are waived. While Terry brutally violated two young girls without hesitation, our next individual also did not bat an eye before carrying out his heinous act on another human. You stabbed a defenseless and immobile woman to death. The case revolves around Michael Sykes. On November 14, 2015, Michael Sykes ended the life of Gabby Doolin. The body was discovered soon after. Madden was arrested a week later after police matched the DNA at the crime scene and then decided to press charges against him. In many respects, this case is very simple. Rebecca Cutler didn't want or need the defendant anymore. Uh, she was cutting him off from her life and uh, from herself. And since Mr. Sykes, you couldn't be with her, uh, you wouldn't be with the children. And like so many other spiteful people in this world, you decided that if you couldn't have her, nobody would have her. If you couldn't have the children, nobody would have the children. It was callous, brutal, and inhumane. And even those words can't begin to describe the carnage, death, and destruction you caused. And based on the evidence of the two trials I presided over, <clears throat> there's no doubt that you caused all the death and carnage in this case. While well, the case is largely circumstantial, it is clear to me that this was premeditated. You said in your video statement that she didn't want you anymore. She didn't need you anymore. She didn't want you around the children. She was back with her old boyfriend, and you confirmed that by going through her phone. You confronted her. You took her phone so that she couldn't contact her old boyfriend. You told people she was cheating on you. And after spending the night at your friend's apartment, you took a knife when you left that morning. The knife used to kill Rebecca and the children. You waited outside a room that you weren't allowed to enter until there was no one around and the children and Rebecca went into the room. Then, by your own admission and your testimony in the first trial, you stabbed a defenseless and immobile woman to death. You stabbed her over 70 times. And then, as the jury found, you killed Zianna Cutler and your own child, Malia, and then tried to kill Mira. Anyone with an ounce of compassion would have stopped after the first stabbing. Anyone with any human decency would have stopped after the first victim. But no, you kept on. Anyone with any type of compassion would have stopped after the first child was stabbed once. But you didn't. You continued. You, you stabbed each and every child numerous times. You left the hotel room as fast as you could. You took the murder weapon with you and tried to dispose of it. The videotape shows you walking as fast as you can to get away before you hailed the bus. You called your mother, and while on the bus, you realized that there was incriminating evidence, the blood on your jacket. So you disposed of the jacket at the ferry terminal, despite how cold the day was. Then you disposed of Rebecca's phone. In short, 
anything that could tie you to the Ramada Inn, anything that could tie you to the murders, and that you could get rid of, you got rid of. You admitted to killing Rebecca. She was unarmed and defenseless, yet you stabbed her over 70 times, all over her body, as if it was in a frenzy. And the wounds suffered by these poor, innocent children, in this case, are consistent with those inflicted on Rebecca in nature, number, and fury. Your daughter was alive in that room when the room was opened and the massacre was revealed. Your daughter lay in that room for an hour, alive, but with her life slowly fading away. Heroic men and women tried in vain to save her. They were hoping against hope for a miracle. They are rattled to this day about what they saw and how their valiant efforts were in vain. Their pain was etched on their faces and in their tears as they testified. You have never shown an ounce of regret. You have never shown an ounce of sorrow. The only person you've ever been concerned with is yourself throughout the, the, the case and its aftermath. While they were rushing lifeless bodies down a hallway and putting every fiber of their being into trying to save lives, you were getting high and playing video games. You didn't stay to help. You didn't call for help. You didn't alert anyone. You sealed your own daughter's fate. You made sure that if you couldn't have her, your own flesh and blood, no one would. Throughout these videos that I've seen, both when you were getting onto the bus, on the bus, on the ferry, and in your interrogation, the only concern I ever saw on your face was when you were trying to hail the bus and thought it wasn't going to stop. That was clear from the shot from the bus. And the only regret you ever had was for yourself when you were in your interrogation and realized you were caught and there was probably no way out of this. In this trial, you were found guilty of three charges. Murder in the first degree of the count two of this indictment for the murder of Zianna Cutler. Murder in the first degree of the count three on this indictment for the murder of Malia Sykes and the attempted murder in the first degree of the count four for attempting to kill Miracle Couple. In many cases, as Mr. Gucci points out, justice should be tempered with mercy. This is not one of those cases. You slaughtered a two-year-old, a one-year-old, and a four-month-old, the most vulnerable members of our society. And as the verdict attests, you showed no compassion or no mercy to innocent children. You deserve none from the court. You failed as a husband, you failed as a father, you failed as a human being. In my opinion, based on what you did, you do not, you do not deserve to ever see the light of day. So accordingly, your sentence on count two of the indictment, murder in the first degree, for killing Zianna Cutler and the others named therein, is a sentence of life without parole. Under count three of the indictment, murder in the first degree, for killing Malia Sykes and the others named therein, your sentence is life without parole. This sentence on count three will run consecutively to the sentence I opposed on count two. On the count four of the indictment, attempted murder in the first degree of Miracle Cutler, your sentence is a minimum of 25 years, a maximum of life. This sentence will run consecutively to the sentences for murder in the first degree on the counts two and three. In the first trial, you were convicted of murder in the second degree on the count five as to Rebecca Cutler. I sent you to 25 years to life on that charge. I now order that the sentences I am imposing today on counts two, three, and four run consecutively to the sentence of 25 to life already imposed on the count five for the murder of Rebecca Cutler. You were also convicted of grand larceny in the fourth degree, a lesser included of robbery in the third degree in the first trial. I sent you to one and a third to four years of state prison consecutive to count five on that charge, I ordered that, that sentence, and these sentences I impose today also run consecutively to the sentence I impose, imposed on the count 10. Mm -hmm. The judge firmly handed down the appropriate punishment for Sykes' actions, also ensuring that the victims received fair compensation. While Michael's actions led him to his ultimate demise, our next individual did the unthinkable for his own son. As to count six, criminal attempt to commit a felony to wit, sexual exploitation of children. The incident revolves around Justin Ross Harris. 
In 2012, Justin Ross ended the life of his 22-month-old son in Georgia. After discovering his son's body, the police quickly deduced that Justin was the one who had carried out the horrifying deed. The police made the decision to file charges against him. Once a crime has been committed, many questions are brought up. In this instance, detectives questioned him extensively in an attempt to learn his true face. I gotta ask you some, you know, just some basic questions, okay? So, uh, what's your level of education? I have a college degree. All right, what's your degree in? Management Information Systems. What'd you get from Alabama? Okay, uh, are you under the influence of any intoxicants right now? I'm not. Alcohol, prescription medications. Do you take any prescription medications? Do you have any medical conditions? Um, that require the doctor's care and bring relief? No. Okay. Um, anything illegal? No. What about the drug, please? I'm not here to know. Okay. And English is your primary language? Is it? Okay. If not, you're going to bring You're doing great. You'd be surprised. Um, we did interview some French people. And their English was not very strong. Okay. We are a cop. Please say first. Before we begin, you don't need any water? No. You just want to use the bathroom? Mm -hmm. Okay. Please be 18. Okay, I just want to hear, you know, what happened you know, during your day. Okay. Before we do that, you watch TV, you were in jail before. Okay. I have every junior rights. And that protects you, protects me. Absolutely. Okay. Before we ask you any questions, you must understand your rights. You have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. Okay. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions and to have them occur with you during the questioning. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. You do not afford a lawyer. Well, we'll be appointed for you before any questioning if you wish. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. okay. If you decide to ask questions now about a lawyer present, you still have the right to stop answering at any time. You also have the right to stop answering at any time until you talk to a lawyer. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. What does that mean to you? Uh, I mean, it's clear cut of part of my little conscience for you. Mm -hmm. Basically, I don't yeah. think I can, I can invoke my right to silence at any, any, time. any given time. You can answer one question, skip two questions, and answer one question. At any time, I can say, okay, I'll run that away. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Absolutely. This is your waiver of right. Can you read that out loud? I've read the statement of my rights and I understand what my rights are. I'm willing to make a statement and answer and answer questions. I do not want a lawyer at this time. I understand and know what I am doing. No promises or threats have been made to me and no pressure or coercion um, of any kind has been used against me. Let's just start with basics. Where do you live? I live in Maryland, Georgia. Okay, what's your address? Uh, 1212 Wins Ridge. It's Whiskey, Nike, November, November, Echo Sierra, Ridge Circle. Yeah, no, it's everything. My wife and my family. What's your wife's name? Leanna, L E A N N A. And it's her last name? It is. Well, just the reason I asked that, you understand it today? I understand. Okay. Come on. Common law, white system, you know, I haven't been married, married. You know, but I guess what? Put your papers real quick. Yeah, 27. Oh, 27. 80. 80. And what's your phone number? 205 792 6806. Okay. And what service is free? It's ATT. Alright, so what's the name of the phone, Jason? It's 514 And what's her phone number? 205.
By the end of the day, the true identity of the criminal started to come to light. Would the detectives discover Justin's real face? You can talk about that very well. You did. Um, I go straight to my desk and I sit down and I check my emails and I, you know, I have banjo with the guys I work with and mm -hmm. that's pretty much my day. I have a open my morning meeting every day at 10.30. I had no meeting. Um, so, you know, day's going good. Um, lunchtime rolls around. I got some guys that I work with across the street. They came and picked me up. Um, we went to Publix, ate lunch. They took me back and dropped me off. Um, um, and then finished the work day and then we had plans to go to a movie and the two guys on the lunch we had plans to go to a movie at five o'clock, which is where I was going. I was gonna to try to get there about four twenty, four thirty, just to kind of beat the if there's an after work crowd trying to go to a movie or anything like that, I'll we'll probably get there a little early. And as I was turning out as I was driving down, um Takers, but I'm Neighbors Mill. Um, I was driving on Neighbors Mill. I caught a cop coming up there. When I looked to my right, the chain's on. And I caught a cop coming up there in the back. And I thought I was on. I thought I was sitting there. And I thought I was on. And I lost it. I pulled in. I pulled in my car. And, you know, I for a few minutes, for I guess for a few minutes, I turned it. But for just a few seconds, I was thinking, thinking, well, I, 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 I couldn't compose myself and do it. So another, there was a group there. Um, for sure, you know my name. Um, and they attended, and I just, I, I, I just, I saw him laying there. And he, he had that stare in his face. I knew he was going to. Did you take a bow car seat? I did. Okay. And he was on. And I. How did you know he was on? Just. He, he, his eyes were open, like halfway. He was, his, his eyes were open halfway. He wasn't breathing. He didn't have a pulse. And every medic training I've ever gone through, you know, told me to check for breathing, check for breathing, check for a pulse. He didn't either. I knew what this was. I knew that I had done what every parent in their life fears they've done, and that's just leave their son in the car all day. And I lost it. I started screaming, started yelling. I screamed, but I don't even remember what I yelled. I was just freaking out. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's right. And I, just, I was trying to frantically call the daycare and tell them. Because my wife was in route to get me from the daycare where he was supposed to be. And I was supposed to be and I was trying to find the call daycare and tell them when my wife gets there, don't let her leave. There's there's gonna be people that are gonna show up. 
because I didn't want her to be. I didn't want to worry the. I didn't want to freak out thinking that he was going to do it. Did you call anybody when you were on the team? Did you call them out anymore? Did you call them? No, but they had four people calling them out. Did you call anyone? I, I called. I, I made two calls to the daycare, and they didn't answer. And I made one call to my wife, which I hung up because that's when, that's when, um, I couldn't take the officer's name. So she told me to. That's your paper. No, it wasn't my paper. It was, uh, oh, I, I have no idea of the okay. email. Um, she told me to get off the phone. Mm -hmm. And I promptly cursed at her because I was losing my mind. Um, uh, and another day. So did you get anybody on the phone? No. Nobody. Okay. Because I heard you talking on the phone like you were talking to somebody. So they walked up. Hey, you understand that there's a lot of things going on that it's easy to forget. So did you talk to anybody on the phone? No. No? Got nobody on the phone. Okay. What kind of phone is it? It's a phone pass. Is it a passcode? It is. Can I get the passcode? Maybe. Uh, I don't know what that's good. It's biometric. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Um, so I get a phone so I can call my brother and... Yeah, I'm going to let you get numbers and everything. Okay. I'm going to get a copy. Let's start back. Let me say you both thought that was a normal day. On a normal day, do you take Cooper to daycare? Uh, is that your normal person? Who's the person that normally takes Cooper to daycare? <laughs> I would say that most of the time I take him to the care. Well, it's, it's, there's no routine. It's, there's a little bit of real work early, I don't know, I'm the cup. It's, hey, when you take him today, it's never, it's really a flip of the coin. I would, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't even think that I take him to the time. I have no idea. Well, it's Wednesday now. He took him Monday. <sighs> The judge decides what punishments are appropriate for the offender's actions. Here, he firmly administered the suitable penalty for Justin's conduct. The court pronounces the following sentence in the case of the State of Georgia versus Justin Ross Harris, criminal action 1493124. As to count one, the court imposes the sentence of, as to malice murder, uh, with the jury having found the defendant guilty, sentence of the court is life to serve in confinement without parole. As to count two, felony murder, guilty, it's vacated by law due to the conviction on count one. As to count three, felony murder, disposition by the jury of guilty, uh, it is also vacated by law due to conviction on count one. As to count four, cruelty to children in the first degree, uh, the jury having found the defendant guilty, the sentence of the court is 20 years to serve in confinement. This will be consecutive to count one, malice murder, life to serve in confinement without parole. Count five, cruelty to children in the second degree, the jury having found the defendant guilty, it will merge into count four as a matter of law. As to count six, criminal attempt to commit a felony to wit, exploitation of children uh, with a disposition by the jury of guilty. The court imposes a sentence of 10 years to serve in confinement consecutive to counts one and four. As to count seven, dissemination of harmful material to minors with the jury having found the defendant guilty, the court imposes a sentence of 12 months to serve in confinement consecutive to counts one, four, and six. And as to count eight, Dissemination of harmful material to minors, the jury having found the defendant guilty. The court imposes a sentence of 12 months to serve in confinement, consecutive to counts 1, 4, and uh, 6, and 7. 
Mr. Harris, this is to advise you that you have the right to file any action for habeas corpus brought pursuant to Title IX, Chapter 14, Article 2 of the Official Code of Georgia. It must be filed within one year from the judgment of conviction on misdemeanors or four years from the judgment of conviction on felonies becoming final by the conclusion of direct review or the expiration of the time for seeking such review. That would be the fifth day of December. 2016. You also have a right uh, to appellate review. I know that you've discussed that with counsel because you and I have discussed that previously. So let this serve to remind you that you have um, 30 days in which to file the first steps toward appellate review. Mr. Kilgore has already advised the court that he either has or will, I would assume will, file um, a motion for new trial and take the appropriate appellate steps. Is that still your intent, Mr. Kilgore? Yes, I'm going to take care of it. I appreciate that. My final observation is this, um, Mr. Harris. Um, I went back and reviewed and thought about your statement to the police and your statement to your wife when you were taken into custody. And it stood out to me that in both of those, you took the occasion to express your wish that you would be an advocate so that people would never do this again to their children. And I would say, perhaps not in the way that you intended, but you in fact have accomplished that goal. Anything else for the state? No, Your Honor. Anything else for the defense? You can take the defendant into custody. While Ross took the life of his own flesh and blood, our next individual extinguished the flames of a kind and kindred soul. Who misguiding you and misleading you to do such a horrible crime. The case was centered around Relford Trey Alexander. In April 2015, Relford ended the life of Salahud Injit Mood at an apartment complex in Lexington, Kentucky. After discovering the body, the cops quickly deduced that Relford was the one who had carried out the horrifying deed. He was charged with all the horrific acts he committed. No father should ever have to deal with the loss of a son. For Salahuddin's father, this was the case. He expressed his sincere forgiveness to the offender. I blame the devil, the devil, who misguided you and misleading you to do such a horrible crime. No, I don't blame you. I'm not angry at you at all. I forgive you on behalf of Salahuddin and his mother on the act of involving to kill him. Trey Alexander Relford was sentenced to 31 years in prison for ending the life of a Pizza Hut delivery driver. While Relford ended up being forgiven by the father of his victim, such forgiveness did not await our next individual. I mourn with all of you who mourn my children and Tammy. The case revolved around a 49-year-old woman named Lori Vallow Daybell. In July 2019, she was accused of ending the life of her ex-husband, Charles Vallow, with the help of her brother, Alex Cox. She was also accused of taking the lives of her two children, Tylee Ryan and Joshua Vallow, as well as Tammy Daybell. Law enforcement exhumed Tammy's body. The police investigation revealed Lori's involvement and pressed charges against her. During questioning, suspects often try to muddy the water so that officers cannot see the lies easily. Lori tried to do something similar. Did it work? Let's see for ourselves. Um, so I got Jada separated, I got, and he was like, well, and he's like this about timing. He's like, I'm leaving in 20 minutes because it's like 15 minutes to the school and like you can't get there early. They don't open the gates until 8.20 or something like that. And I said, well, why don't you just go now? I don't want him in the house. I'm like, why don't you just go now and um, take him to Burger King because that's what he likes for breakfast. He's he very particular about food. Yeah. He wanted chicken fries for yeah. breakfast and the Sprite. Like, <laughs> and I just can't believe what he wants because if you don't know what he wants, it's like <laughs> on the floor screaming, dragging him into just go like, yeah. and he's big and he's heavy and yeah. it's hard for me to handle that anyway. So I said, just go. And so he said, okay. So I gave him a backpack. He got in the car. This is his MO, right? He always leaves something in the house and comes back. He never leaves the first time. I always expect my husband to come back into the house, right? So I guess he had left his phone on the counter. So he initially left with the backpack and with JJ? And so then... he put them in the car okay. in the driveway, and then he came back in. 
right? So I kissed Gigi goodbye. He came back in and his phone was on the counter and I had his phone. And he was like, give me my phone. And I was like, why don't you show me your text that you've been texting, blah, 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 you know, whatever. Because he's like acting really weird, like he's plotting something against me. Like, I'm like, why are you, why are you even here? Like, what did you come here for, you know? He's been talking to my other brother. My brother came into town at the same time last mm-hmm. night. And I haven't talked to my brother in a while, my other brother. And I was like, and so he was texting him on the phone when he first got to my house. And I'm like, why are you texting Adam? Like, do you even talk to him? Like, my other brother. And, um, you know, he's been telling me all these texts, like, you're going down, blah, 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 blah. He's blaming me for our marriage breaking up and my niece getting divorced and my friend getting divorced. He said, I'm going to destroy your own families. Okay. Because I want everybody to get divorced. I'm like, what would my motivation be for people getting divorced? So I could babysit the kids more? Like, yeah. why would I have any control over what people do? Yeah. So it's just very odd. But anyway, he goes he goes nuts. He's gone nuts on us a lot of times. Tyler and I have had to leave with JJ over the years, probably five times, and just stay in a hotel for two days because he goes nuts. Like, you don't know what's going to set him off. Like, whatever and she's mad at me for always like going back but we had JJ and he's special needs and it's really hard like yeah. it's even harder to get revenge so. so when you say he goes nuts that means that can mean a lot of different things right. so goes nuts like yelling and screaming yeah goes yelling nuts, and like, screaming breaking like, things yes. goes nuts like physical violence he's never really besides like grabbing us and pushing us but not like punching okay. us or something but he, with Tylee he has gotten physical okay before and with my grown son like physical how like got into a physical fist fight with my son when he was 16 okay and he came after Tylee um two times in Hawaii okay and like went like he was gonna hit her but then I got in between them uh-huh. right how old was she when that happened um probably 14 13 and 14 okay mm-hmm. um so this morning he comes back in and he comes back in i wouldn't give him his phone he was screaming at me to give him his phone he was very worried about whatever was on his text Mm -hmm. that he did not want me to see and so i was just holding it there and he was screaming at me and i was kind of walking towards around the house with it so he couldn't get it he's like reaching for it and stuff like that and so tylee came out of her room upset Mm -hmm. and she had a bat And she told him to leave her mother alone, like, Uh right? So she was really, whatever. And he's screaming at her, don't you hit me with that bad, blah, 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 blah. And then my brother heard all the commotion because he was in there in bed. And so he came out into the main room and um, I guess whatever. What's your brother's name? Alex. Alex, okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, he just started... He was screaming and he was super upset and whatever and... um, He's yelling at Tylee, don't you tell me with that bad, and blah, 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 blah. And so Tylee, I guess, I don't know if she swung at him or what, but he, like, grabbed the bat from Tylee and then went to, like, hit Tylee with the bat. It was, and I was right there, and they were right there, and my brother grabbed him from behind, mm-hmm. like, just to stop him from hitting Tylee. You go like this, like, he grabbed him, like... Yeah, from behind, like, uh-huh. just kind of to pull him back. Uh-huh. And then um, they got into the thing, and he's hitting him with the bat, and they're on the ground, like, grappling around or whatever. And then, um, I, I mean, that was all and he, quickly. And he hit your brother with the bat while they were grappling and stuff? Yeah, I... Yes, he was hitting him with the bat, like swinging the bat, you know, back and forth, and they were kind of like on the ground, and I was like freaking out, trying to go around, knowing JJ was in the car, yeah, right, and so then he got up and he had the bat like this towards me, and I was going around the other side to try to just get out of his range where he kind of hit me, and then. Um, I had told Tylee, because she was on the ground, because after he took the bat from her, she fell back. And so I told her, I was like, go get in the car with JJ. Like, I don't want JJ coming in to the house. or mm-hmm. And I wanted her out of the way. I wanted the kids out of the way, whatever this fight was going to be. And then... Um, Do you remember what your, your husband or your brother were saying or yelling during all of this? If they were at just all? Just kind of get off me out or whatever you know whatever they were like like don't talk to my niece that way yeah. <laughs> whatever like it was I don't remember specifics but they were kind of both 
they were kind of in the heat of it. I don't think there was much many words, many words. that I remember. Mm-hmm. So Tyree goes outside. Yeah, she was outside. And, and then what happened? Then he, they got up from that, and my brother had, like, stepped back, I guess, and um, then Charles was coming with me at the back, yelling at me to give him his phone mm-hmm. still, because I had it in my hand. It was all really quickly. Mm-hmm. And then um, when I went around, kind of in the circle, then my brother was there. Um, When you said he, when you were going around and he was coming at you with the bat, Mm -hmm. how was he holding the bat? Just like that, like backwards, almost in one arm. Like he was swinging, but like swinging it backwards. He would have done like like he would have swung it backwards at me, not frontwards. Okay, yeah. He had he was a professional baseball player. Okay. (laughs) So it wasn't a good idea for Tyler to get out of that. (laughs) Probably not the. I mean, he played semi pro. Yeah, he was yeah. But, um, yeah, and then I was kind of turned around, and we were all right there in that room, except for the kids had been outside by that time, and I heard the gunshot. Mm-hmm. And so you heard the shot? Mm-hmm. Did, did you actually see, see the shot, or did you just hear it? I had gone around mm-hmm. to the kitchen to get away from him and so back around. So I don't know if you went in the house. I didn't, so I'm like so, a little bit of a disadvantage. Yeah, so I didn't see when, I didn't see the shot, I heard it, and then I came back around and I saw that he was on the ground okay. and I was freaking out. Yeah. And so I was just freaking out and I just went into mom mode and like, I've got to go to get JJ to school. I've got to get to the kids. I just like I got to get to the kids, mm-hmm. and so I just went outside and to see if they were in there. Okay, I didn't want them coming back in the house when all that was going on, and and um, got JJ in the car, and he was trying to come in, mm-hmm. and Tylee was like looking at me with like the crazy eyes, like what just happened, and I told her to get in the car and we're going to take JJ to school, mm-hmm. and. I just left. When you came back in and you saw him on the ground, where was your brother? Did you see him where he was at? Yeah, he was right in front of him. Okay. Like, it all happened very quickly. That right. Was, I mean, I was, I feel like I was there because I was right there, like, yeah. a second later. Like, okay. I just went around the kitchen to get away from him. Did your brother say anything to you at all? Do you remember? No. We were both just in shock. Okay. Like, it was just a, I mean... I didn't say anything. I went out with the kids just to check on them first, and I was going to come back in maybe, uh-huh. but I didn't. I was like, I just have to get him to school okay. and call the police and come back, you know, whatever. Did anybody say any? Did you, you or your brother say anything at some point about calling the police or calling 911? Do you remember? Yeah, he called me. Okay. And he said, are you taking Gigi to school? Uh-huh. And I said, yeah, we need to call the police. And he okay. said, okay. Okay. So you, he called you when you didn't come back inside, basically? Right. Because okay. I was, like, in the car for a minute, and then I was like, what do I do? Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I didn't want JJ to go inside, and I didn't okay. I didn't know what to do. And Tyler was freaking out. I was yeah. trying to get them away from the scene. Understandable. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, I don't, and you may not know this, mm-hmm. so, because I know you heard the shot. Do you know at what point your brother had the gun? Do you know if he had it when they got in their first fight, or did he have to go get it, or do you do you know that at all? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. And do you remember if you ever heard your brother? I didn't see him ever leave the room. Okay. So. It but, was so fast. All that was so fast. Like, yeah. I'm on the ground rolling around and I'm screaming. And This probably happened in a couple seconds. Yeah. I mean, it was like super fast. Um, and I don't know if you know this or not. Does your brother normally carry a gun? Like, I carry a gun everywhere I go. Right. Like, so, I know he's a gun person. Like, okay. he has guns and things. Okay. He did showed you, up guns. And <laughs> did you know that he had one with him no. when he came over? No. Okay. But I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Because okay. he's very very professional with kind of proficient professional mm-hmm. um like responsible is usually a good right but I'm responsible with um, and then do you remember if uh at any time 
So you were trying to get away from him, right. and you heard the shot. Prior to the shot, do you remember at any point hearing your husband or your brother saying anything to any either of them? No. Um, so my second very ridiculous question mm -hmm. is... Is there anything else that I didn't ask about or anything that we didn't cover that you think is important? Um, I always ask that just because I wasn't there, and so we're, we're right, going through right. something that happened right. a super small amount of time. Yes. Can I so, that? Yeah, go for it. Mm -hmm. Just thinking. Mm -hmm. Lori's behavior was notably dubious, raising numerous questions that cast doubt on her judgment regarding her ex-husband. So this is Denise. Hi. 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 Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. 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 So she's gonna um, take you over to like a conference room so you guys can sit and talk and stuff. Okay. And then you can just, once you guys talk and kind of, you can decide if you're comfortable with Tylee coming in or whatever. Okay. Sure. Um, and then we'll, we'll... I just don't want her to be left alone and yeah. by herself. Yeah. She's freaking out. Like, so <laughs> I, we keep kind of popping in and checking on her and stuff. I just don't so. want her to be alone too long. Yeah. We'll, be as, we'll be as brief or as long as you want. Okay. okay. I'm here to, to try to, you got lots of choices. <laughs> <laughs> well, it will just get started, and then we're, you know, then we'll, we'll go from there. Does that sound okay? Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. They handed me this, but that was, was just out of his room. <laughs> so Before her sentencing, Lori commenced her address to the judge. What she said not only baffled everyone, but also gave a rare glimpse into her psyche. I would like to start by quoting John from the New Testament in the Bible. In John chapter 8, verse 7, Jesus says, He that is without sin among you, let him cast first cast a stone at her. Then in first, verse 15, Jesus says, Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true. Jesus knows me. And Jesus understands me. I mourn with all of you who mourn my children and Tammy. Jesus Christ knows the truth of what happened here. Jesus Christ knows that no one was murdered in this case. Accidental deaths happen. Suicides happen. Fatal side effects from medications happen. I have a different perspective in life because in 2002, when I was pregnant with Tylee, I died in the hospital while in labor with her. They tried to stop my labor. They put me on the table and they put something in my IV and I felt my spirit falling to the floor. I was standing near my pregnant body watching the doctors try to revive me, which took them a few minutes in that time. My sister Stacy was standing to my left. I turned to hug her and was surprised that her spirit was as tangible as a physical body because I knew I was in spirit and she was in spirit. She said she needed to show me some things and we went to heaven. I later returned to my body. Because of this experience, I have access to heaven and the spirit world. Since then, I have had many communications from people now living in heaven, including my children, Tylee Ashlyn and Joshua Jackson, my sisters, Stacy and Lolly, my aunts and my uncles and my grandparents. I have had many communications with Jesus Christ, the savior of this world and our heavenly parents. I've had many angelic visitors have come and communicated with me and even manifested themselves to me. Because of these communications, I know for a fact that my children are happy 
and busy in the spirit world. Because of my communications with my friend, Tammy Daybell, I know that she is also very happy and extremely busy. I have always mourned the loss of my loved ones, and I have lost many in this mortal world. However, I know them more than most people. I know where they are now and what they're doing. I know how wonderful heaven is, and I'm homesick for it every single day. I know we all lived in heaven before we were born on earth, and we were all adult spirits in the heavenly realm. We chose to come to earth as mortals. Heaven is more wonderful than you can possibly imagine. I do not fear death, but I look forward to it. I do not, I did not want to return to my body when I was out of it. Even though my son Colby, who I adored more than anything, was only six years old at the time, and I was about to give birth to this new baby girl that I wanted so badly. I was a young mother, and you would think I wouldn't want to leave my children, but as I stood in heaven, I did not want to go back. I thought they would be fine without me because I was peaceful and I was happy and I was home. But then I was told by Jesus that I needed to go back and complete things that I had covenanted or promised to do before I was born. This caused me a lot of distress because I knew heaven was my real home and I only wanted to be there. I was free from pain, emotional and physical. But then I was shown how I would help my children and others in the future. So ultimately I did agree to go back to my body. Kylie has visited me. She is happy and very busy. Tylee is free now from all the pains of her life. Tylee suffered horrible physical pain her whole life. I sat with Tylee in the hospital year after year after year while she screamed in pain when the morphine wasn't even enough to take away the pain of her pancreatitis. I sat there while she cried and I held back her hair while she threw up and I am the only person on this earth who knows how much Tylee suffered in her life. She had pain every single day. She never felt good. Her body did not work right. And I don't know if that was from complications from me dying while she was being born or something else, but she had a very difficult life. She was sexually abused by her own biological father since she was three years old and she was forced by family court to go visit him for 10 years against her will. I fought for her in court. I protected her. I tried to protect her with my whole life. I tried to protect her. I worried about her every single day. Tylee had to get her GED because she couldn't go to school every day because she never felt good. She felt sick. Nobody knows this because Tylee, like myself, tries to put on a good front, tries to be a happy person, tries to have hope in life, tries to know that she's here for a purpose and that she has an eternal purpose to be on this earth. But I never stopped worrying about her. One of the times that Tylee came to me as a spirit after she died, she said, she commanded me and she said to me, stop worrying, mom, we are fine. She showed her special diversion toward her deceased son. Interestingly, she also talked about some interesting things about Tammy. What did she actually want to prove? Let's see. The first time JJ visited me after he passed away, he put his arm around me and he said to me, you didn't do anything wrong, mom. I love you. And I know you loved me every minute of my life. JJ, JJ, Joshua Jackson, was an adult spirit, and he was very, very tall when he put his arm around me. He is busy, he is engaged, he has jobs that he does there, and he is happy where he is. His life was short, 
but JJ's life was meaningful. JJ was a wonderful person and touched the lives of everyone. And I adored him every minute of his life. My eternal friend, Tammy Daybell has visited me on several occasions. She came to bring me peace and comfort. And I know that she is extremely busy helping her family, especially her children and grandchildren. And I have a great love for Tammy. My beautiful children, Tylee Ashland and Joshua Jackson, rest safely this day in the arms of Jesus. My wonderful friend, Tammy Daybell, rests safely this day in the arms of Jesus. And I look forward to the day when we are all reunited and I too will rest with them in the arms of my Jesus. Upon closely inspecting every aspect of the case, the judge finally gave a sentencing worthy of such heinous acts. You may not believe to this day that you've done anything wrong and you still may think you're justified by your religious beliefs for what happened here. I'm not here to judge that, but I don't believe that any God in any religion would want to have, have this happen, what happened here. And your crimes are heinous and egregious, and that alone can constitute a major aggravating factor that requires me to impose a serious length of incarceration. So after weighing all those factors I need to in aggravation, I find that the sentences I'm about to impose will serve the interest of justice by, number one, preventing you from ever doing this again, that they will not depreciate the seriousness of your crimes, will punish you appropriately, and will serve to deter both you and others. So that concludes the aggravating factors the court considered. At this time then, I am prepared to pronounce sentence. Mr. Thomas, Mr. Archibald, and the defendant, would you please rise for the pronouncement of sentence? Based on all the relevant circumstances, including the evidence and recommendations presented in court today, it's the judgment of this court. Ms. Vallow, you'll be sentenced as follows. I'll first note I'm gonna take up the counts out of order as I want to address the substantive murder sentences first. So on count two, the charge you were convicted of, the, the first degree murder of Tylee Ryan, you are sentenced to the custody of the State Board of Corrections to serve the maximum allowed sentence of fixed determinate term of life imprisonment with no possibility of parole. On count four, the charge of the first degree murder of Joshua Jackson Vallow, you are sentenced to the custody of the State Board of Corrections to serve the maximum allowed sentence, a fixed determinate life imprisonment sentence with no possibility of parole. I'll next address the three conspiracy counts you've been convicted of and note under Idaho Code 181701, the punishment for those crimes is the same as the underlying offenses you combined to commit. One of the offenses you combined to commit was first degree murder, so those may be punishable also by imprisonment for life. When I look at what the appropriate sentences should be for the conspiracy charges, at first I wondered if they should be as long of a term or serious as the substantive murder charges. However, what I've concluded is that these conspiracy convictions merit the same grave punishment for several reasons. First, the conspiracies in which you engaged in have had far reaching impacts on many people besides the deceased victims. And with what the courts heard, I am convinced that the conspiracy charges also merit the same serious sentence. So on count one, the conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Tylee Ryan and grand theft by deception, you're sentenced to the custody of the State Board of Corrections to serve the maximum allowed sentence to fixed determinate term of life imprisonment with no possibility of parole. On count three, the conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Joshua Jackson Vallow and grand theft by deception. You're sentenced to the custody of the State Board of Corrections to serve the maximum allowed sentence, a fixed determinant term of life imprisonment with no possibility of parole. 
and on count five, the conspiracy to commit the first degree murder of Tamara Tammy Daybell, you're sentenced to the custody of the State Board of Corrections to serve the maximum allowed sentence, a fixed determinate term of life imprisonment with no possibility of parole. Finally, the court will address count seven, which is the charge of grand theft. On that charge, court is going to sentence you to a fixed determinate term of five years of prison, followed by an indeterminate term of five years of prison for a total 10 year term of imprisonment on the grand theft. Court will next consider whether sentences should be imposed consecutively or concurrently. I generally don't, I'm a pragmatic person and I've struggled with the point of a consecutive sentence when in Idaho a life sentence is just that, a life sentence without parole. And I've thought it through. However, when I looked at this case and the more I thought about it, I've determined that because there are three separate murders with three separate victims that occurred at three separate times, then running counts concurrently would not serve the interests of justice because those crimes all need to be taken into account separately and distinctly and individually. There are some individuals who do not think twice before committing horrifying acts against a fellow human being. They do not feel empathy or guilt. For more videos about these criminals, hit the subscribe button.